Oh, give it up for Birmingham, everybody. Yeah, it's a little bit small to show you. <laughs> the singer, the singer is Claudia Brüggen. I must ex uh, inform you from former propaganda. She's a friend of mine. She lived in Düsseldorf uh, when she was younger, but she's in London now. Unfortunately, couldn't come today. But I was so happy to have her also as a uh, yeah collaborator on this album. Beautiful voice. Yeah, wonderful. So there's there's a tiny little Pete Dugal. Let's let's see the real one. Is the real Pete Dugal in the house? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there he is. Big round of applause for Pete DeGal. Hello, oh, sir. Thanks for coming. Good time to take a seat there. Hello. 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 Nice to see you. Have a nice seat. Nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, have you got my phone? Not one. Oh, another one. Hello. Pete, so. Okay, so. How did you become involved in the magazine One Net? Because we, we hear that you met in Hebden Bridge. Uh, uh, um, was it a festival or a party? Yeah, so we met in Hebden, like Wolfgang was saying earlier. I picked him up from the airport. Um, 2015, right, Wolf? 2015? You accept that, yeah? Yeah, uh, 2015. <laughs> long ago. Mm. Yeah, be. and it was, um, it was a Hebden Bridge Arts Festival, so I, I picked Wolf up. And by the time we got back to Hebden, it was only like a... 50 minute drive or a one hour drive and um, we've just become really good friends and Zuhal as well obviously. So you'd you know. never met before? No, no we'd never met before and um, I'd obviously had a CD ready in the car to put on in the background of all my own music because I just thought <laughs> just, like, just look in the mirror and see what what Wolf thinks about this one. Just by chance, yeah. <laughs> just a chance. Yeah but I, I intended to give Wolfgang a, you know some of my music just to see what he thought of it and um uh, but Wolf got in the car and said oh, I'm really tired I don't want any music so <laughs> but by the time we got to head we were just really good friends you know and we'd had a we were just laughing and it was like we'd known each other for you know 10 20 years or something it was strange you know it was it's really crazy nice. huh how could you stand me so long <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know not so easy sometimes no no but the good thing is uh, we could not work personally because of the uh, corona you know yeah. and we were not uh, allowed to fly and visit us each other in uh, uh, each other's studio so we had to do everything on the internet you know send files there and back yeah. and there and back and some made some some zoom calls and uh, telephone calls millions of telephone calls by the way and emails my godness trillions yeah. of me <laughs> and you know spoke about uh, our taste in music and we really fight it sometimes in about some know. tracks of the, especially of the arrangements of the tracks but uh, it was really like brothers do yeah, yeah. And these words he was talking about, I've got them all on my phone as well. They're so. real, are they? You've <laughs> yeah, heard no. them. <laughs> no, well, Wolf would often send me ideas, you know, I mean, the way we work is um, I'd have an idea or he'd have an idea and he'd be inspired by something and he'd send me something, you know, it might just be a clip or even some words or something. And we just had this uh, really beautiful, natural thing where you just bounce things back and forth and, and uh, it just ended up becoming something that we both thought was really beautiful you know um it's not it's not like it was prescribed or we did like wolfgang was saying we didn't decide to write an album or we do this it just was all very organic and um i think that's why it ended up working so well you know okay so, Pete, so what does it mean for you to work with someone like wolfgang um i mean first and foremost i mean a lot of people say oh you know it must be really amazing working with Wolf, and obviously it is, because <laughs> I, was, I, was, I wasn't going to say anything else, don't worry. <laughs> no, it's, it, it's amazing, obviously, but I think people think the whole idea that he was in um, craft work for so long, who obviously, I mean, a band I loved growing up, you know, was really um, listened to all the time, but all of that kind of goes out the window within a few, you know, a few days or even a few hours. It's all about the person, you know, and um, if you don't get on with someone on that level where you really trust and, and kind of love each other, really, um, it's not really going to work. So, um, but you, that you knew that I did not write any note and any music with Kraftwerk and <clears throat> that I was 
far away from Graphvex since many years. You knew that. Yeah, no, yeah. I knew that. I mean, it was nothing. So we had not much proofs yeah, what yeah, yeah. music I had released yeah, exactly, since yeah. the first album, I mean, Time yeah. with EMI. That was a completely different thing, mm. an album which I still like. But mm. that was the first thing I found myself as a storyteller, you know. Mm. And it was many, many years between them and we found each other. Mm. And yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I, I believe you did not even know the Time Per Album after. I, I did from, originally from 90, when it came 97, out. 97, yeah. can you believe that? How yeah. old that is? Mm. And that already brought me uh, in, into a completely different way from my former band. The minimalism they had and, and, and the themes I had, I, I could not hear them anymore about technique, about uh, IT, about, uh, about, about uh, robots and uh, computers. I could not anymore like these themes, you know. I, I, was, I was happy to be back and with warm uh, blood in my, in my veins, you know, and I was a human again. Mm. But anyway, <laughs> the good thing is the humans have romanticism. The humans have melodies. And I had my melodies reserved because they were already before in me, before Kraftwerk. This, ro the, this romantic melodies um, compared uh, with, with the technique, with the synthesizers and, and the sequences, that was the reception of Kraftwerk. And uh, the melodies was the, um, the main thing why I, um, I, why I stayed with Kraftwerk so long, you know. Mm -hmm. I like the music most, that's because Trans Europe is my favorite album from them, still, even if I was only the drummer. And, uh, but mm -hmm. I kept the romantic melodies in me, and we can use this, my talent today in our songs, you know. It's in everyone. So that's why we got mm. wonderful uh, reviews in your country mm. about our music, which we did. And everyone says, every journalist says, you can hear always a little bit of Kraftwerk in him, you know. He, he cannot stop that. It's always in him. <laughs> but I must, in every, in every interview, I say, my goodness, it was already before in me. It comes from my family. It comes from, mm -hmm. my, <clears throat> from my very talented and vivacious mother. She was loving um, very romantic melodies from South America. She made parties with her, with her friends in our home. And she, they danced on rumba, samba, fox and uh, uh, limba and all these these happy melodies they really uh, fixed my head I was educated I grew up with these melodies and I loved my mother very much and she was beautiful of course every mother is beautiful but my was the most beautiful mother <laughs> everyone says I know I know but uh, you know that was um, why I loved craft -like music because of the melodies yeah, no, but you, you say that, Wolfgang, about the melodies in Kraftwerk, but I mean, like you, Wolfgang <laughs> would send me melodies that he'd recorded into his phone or whatever, and, I, and it would, I, they would just floor me, like the one in Say No, which um, we just about got to, but, and it's just like when you get goosebumps and you think, oh my God, this is the most beautiful thing I've heard in ages. So those romantic melodies are just deep, yeah. deep within you, aren't they? Sometimes I found them even too kitschy to offer them to him and said, what do you think? It's, I, I like it. Maybe, maybe it's too kitschy. What do you think? And he said, no, I get goosebumps. And then I said, then it's okay if you say that. Yeah, anyway, um, so we are working together and discussing every little part which we put in. And I can really tell you, we, we did a massive, massive uh, work with this album. It was unbelievable. The good thing is that we had time. We had time. Most of them, two years or even three years, we worked because nothing else was to do. We could not travel, even not make holidays, nothing. We were fixed in our homes. And how good was that? Huh? Mm. Yeah. Mm. How that was good, good was actually. Yeah. So we we have could do nearly, another one of those. We have nearly <laughs> done a second album, you know. Yeah. So it's a proper lockdown album. Yeah. So my label manager is here. He said, no, Wolfgang, we would not do 30, 30 uh, tracks on, that, on your new album. We make two. It was Barnaby's. Uh, Barnaby? Ah, there. My wonderful label manager from Cherry Red Records. My friend, by the way. So we, we a, have... Um, a good man. Uh, in theory, we have yeah. loaded up short excerpts from every single track on the album. So if, if there's one that you'd like to talk about specifically, then maybe we'll hit, if you could choose that, and we should be able to play it, I think. Is there one track you'd like us to... I mean, we can, we can hear two or three, but I don't know if you want to pick one. Who, me? Either? Oh, <laughs> yes. Between the two of you, work it ah. scrap it. All right, interesting. What, what do you think? What, what do you want? Otherwise, I'll, I'll choose one. Me, huh? okay. I've forgotten what songs are on there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe that's... Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Okay. We say does beat. Does beat. We beat. say does beat. Excellent. And we say uh, maybe um, electric sheep. Yeah, of I okay. like electric sheep. There's a good story on that afterwards. Okay. okay, our man behind the computer, Joseph, if you could play us das beat, that'd be amazing. Give it up for das beat. <laughs> See Rusty Egan's ears twitching there because it's got yeah. <laughs> correlation with mid air, isn't it? Yeah. So tell us about that track then, Das Beat. That was an idea from Mitch, of course. Das Beat was his idea. Uh, the collaborate idea was from him. I met him. Tell us who Mitch Err is for the people that don't Mitch, know. Mitch, uh, yeah. I met him two times in Düsseldorf in concerts into uh, different venues and. Um, he uh, I was I, I was invited to his backstage uh, for a talk and he said um, he would appreciate that so much and to be being in Dusseldorf and um, he loved my former band of course everything is always taught your former band your former band okay and I said you have the best drummers of the world don't ask me anything you know <laughs> I thought he wanted to ask me to drum a little bit for him I said I don't drum anymore Mitch so you have two drummers in your band and they are brilliant much better than I ever was <laughs> Because um, it's a complete, it's another music he does, and he needs other drummers, you know, I must explain. I could not drum like them. So um, anyway, but his idea was, he invited me for the next, in a, in a bigger, in, in, and then in, in, in that backstage, uh, we got aside, had, had a little glass of champagne, and he said, Wolfgang, uh, what would you mind to do a collaboration? And I said, it's exactly what I wanted to ask you now, because we are working in, on an album already with him, you know. And he said, yes, of course, I have already an idea. Give, give me some days and I'll send you an email. And he sent me an email with, with an MP3 uh, attachment and I was flabbergasted when I heard that it was already Das Beat. Uh, right. The wrong German article, by the way, but it was so charming <laughs> that he did wrong. Should it be Der Beat? Yeah, it is Der Beat. It der is beat. masculine originally, but, but that would not sound so nice uh, spoken by an Englishman, you know. But Das Beat was so funny to us when we spoke about everyone. And even my designer here, uh, Markus, he's, he's my style police anyway, said, Wolfgang, keep that. Don't change. Don't tell him man, anyway, by the way. <laughs> And we left it, and he told his story about the speed, and I thought, okay, then I write my own story, and we, we sing a duet. He you sing your story, and then we change it. Then I come up and come, and he made a little bit arrangement already, you know that. But that was too much um, Ultra Fox style, or Mitch O style, with too much guitar elastic inside, and we wanted to have it more electronic. Uh, wise like we do, and so we got his stamps. That is the, 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 uh, all the uh, dependent parts which we need in, in a track: the drums, the bass, the melodies, and, and anything specials. And so we can we can include them in our music programs and work go on working with them and add our things. So my new vocals and Peter thinks he's uh, the arpeggiator king for me. I say oh, always, you are the king of arpeggio. <laughs> How he's brilliant in that, you know. So we have all, all our, our good parts, our, our talents, and um, this is how we glue together. And this has how we come mostly to a very good end, and sometimes very fast. Hmm. Sometimes it, it needs longer. And in case you don't know, so Midge, uh, from, um, from Ultravox, Visage, Rich Kids, is that right? Yeah. Splendid. You, you know and, um, So what was your part in that, Pete? Where, where did you get involved in, in the that? track? Yeah. I mean, well, uh, Midge sent an idea over and like Wolf was saying, we, we took it and we kind of changed it quite a bit. So we changed the sounds, we changed the drums, uh, changed the arrangements slightly. And then um, uh, Wolfgang had some great ideas for vocals. And so we worked on those and turned it probably more into a bit more of a, a pop song, greedy really, Wolf from what it was. Mm -hmm. um, but that was brilliant, you know, just working on the vocals and obviously Midge's voice is just fantastic and so unique and I know you love his voice as well Wolf um, it was just a really beautiful he writes really beautiful melodic mm -hmm. thing so and um, we just took it um, in our direction and it was just a really lovely thing to work on you know, that was quite fast that one really wasn't it I think it one of the faster that ones that was one of the fastest that's correct mm -hmm. and we met Midge or later <laughs> very um, a cruel story in Ostende he played a, f a big festival that was in October last year you're going to tell that story and there uh, happened very very interesting things <laughs> and for this 
We have a wonderful magazine. Oh, it's in the magazine, yeah. It's in the magazine, this story. It, the story is called Gold to Ostend. You must read that, because I was hurt. I look awful. <laughs> Normally, artists are very vain and they would not show themselves what happened to them. But wow. Where is it? I, want, I <laughs> think I we want might to be reading show. it. Maybe yeah. someone cut it Can out. Can you read an excerpt? Which, which, which <laughs> the juiciest bit? It's right at the back, isn't yeah. it? Look at that. Oh, blimey. Oh, what happened to you? Jesus. Jesus. He said oh, Jesus, blimey. yeah. Okay, yep. So those are available in the foyer. It is a good story. It, it's though. not. It's, it's a crazy. <laughs> the English is crazy. It's a crazy story on the Monday. It is. It's, it was crazy. <laughs> Okay, uh, what was the other track you chose? Electric Sheep. Electric Sheep, yeah. Should we hear a bit of Electric Sheep and then talk about it? Yeah, why Electric Sheep? So listen to it then, it's clear. Here we go, Joe. Play us Electric Sheep. Thank you. 